John, we gotta go. I need five more minutes. John, come on. I've been doing the same stuff for 25 years, and I have a process. It's time, enough of the process. We have I to go. Oh, finally. Get out of my way. Oh, Pizza. thank you very much. Here, keep the change. Oh, thanks. Good man. Yeah. Ah, get, get out of my way, Hartman. John, why are you so nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm still hungry. Ladies and gentlemen, John Panette! Hello, Now I better not suck. You've been so kind. It is a pleasure to be here. Some of you are asking, I wonder how much of this show will be about food. Quite a bit. If you're here for WikiLeaks jokes, you got the wrong guy. I don't know, I, you know, I, I've been actually trying to lose weight because the shows on TV have been scaring me. <laughs> they have shows where they take big people and they throw them in vans. <laughs> and they put them in camps. <laughs> Didn't that happen before in history? <laughs> have the Nazis come back? We have nutrition Nazis. So, I see you have a little Chicago hot dog on your face. Get in the van! You are a porker! Somebody in Chicago sent me up a picture, undoctored, of a Weight Watchers next to a Cold Stone Creamery. I love that picture because it's everywhere I am in life. <laughs> With the ups and downs of my dieting, yeah, I, I, I mean, the, like leaving Cold Stone feeling guilty. Well, I guess it's time to go back to Weight Watchers now. <laughs> or I'm leaving Weight Watchers going, I can't take it anymore! <laughs> Weight Watchers is a great organization. But they won't let you buy more points. <laughs> I, I'm going on a cruise. I am now part of a rogue splinter organization where you can buy and sell points in the secondary market as needed. I'm going to... I'm going to Las Vegas. Here is my credit card. But then you try your dieting and you turn on TV and there's all shows about food. They have shows about just, just one kind of food. They have three shows on about cake. <laughs> they have a show called The Cake Boss. This man is the boss of cake. <laughs> you are the boss of cake? I did not know you could arbitrarily make yourself the boss of a food. I am now the boss of ham. I... My name Boss Hog, pleased to meet you. You can just make yourself boss. I think there has to be a decision made. I think the commission has to meet. There has to be a sit down. <laughs> so what is decided?
Don Buddy will be in charge of cake from West Hoboken <laughs> to West Orange. How did it ever come to this? My son Santino, covered in frosting. I don't want his mother to see him like this. Look what they did to my boy. I never wanted this for you, Michael. I know Santino would have to make cake. And Fredo, well, he's a cream puff. But I always thought you were going to other pastries. Maybe even pastas. Who knows, different types of meats and fishes. Uh. Now, I, I, watch, I watch cake shows once in a while. I think if you're watching, and this is me talking, I think if you're watching cake more than one or two hours a week, you have to reevaluate your decisions in life. I do think there's more to do than watch cake. John, what you doing? I'm watching cake. You watching cake the last time we came over there. We're all gonna come over and talk to you. We've written you all letters and then you can do whatever you want. I had cake intervention. No. The thing is, is that these shows don't change very much. I like dynamic shows. I, you know, I like watching Lost. I didn't understand it, but I liked it. I like, I like Family Guy, Battlestar Galactica. I have a really eclectic taste. But the cake boss, I haven't seen next week's episode. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be about cake. <laughs> My sisters got me a panini maker. I don't like paninis. Uh, a panini, well, first of all, my sisters are very, very nice. They got it for me for my birthday. And I tell them, don't buy me anything. Because I don't want anything. I, you know what? I want to give. It's better to give than to receive. And the gifts are stupid. And I can't pretend anymore. I, I can't look at them and go, Oh, a panini maker. How did you know? I was having trouble making sandwiches. And you saved me. You want to make a panini? Get a frying pan. Put the bread on there. Put stuff in bread. Wait five minutes. Turn it over. Wait five minutes. Then punch it with your fist. Here's your panini. It's, it's, Cause the paninis, they're so squished, you don't know what's in them. And there could, there could be vegetables in there. I, I bit into a panini and I tasted arugula. Wait, where did arugula come from? We had no arugula when I was growing up. My mother never said, John, I want you to go out in the garden and pick some arugula. I'll be right back, Mom. Tomatoes, cucumbers, arugula? No! It's a pretentious, horrifying vegetable. People serve just so they'll look fancy and elegant. It's the emperor's new clothes of vegetables. People don't want to speak up. Spit it out at the table. What are you serving me? It's arugula. It works with the rest of the salad. Yes, it does. The bitter with the dirt taste makes me grateful for the rest of the salad that I would ordinarily hate. Martha Stewart makes me laugh. She gives you instructions to make stuff. I, I'm waiting for her, for her to go one day. Today we're going to build a pyramid. 
based on the ancient pyramid at Giza. Okay. She says things, doesn't she say, like, start with the directions where you go, well, I ain't making this. Uh, like, okay, break out your chestnut roasting pants. I'm not much of a cook, I will admit that. I, you know, I eat out, and that's, it's very hard to be, uh, you know, you eat more calories when you eat out, it's a proven fact. And uh, like, I, didn't even, I didn't even have a toaster. I just bought a toaster recently. And, well, I had one, but I toasted low-carb bread, and it exploded. Um, so I go to buy another toaster. I didn't want any trouble. I went to a nice store and talked to this nice young lady. I saw a toaster for $49. I said, I'll take this toaster. It was a lovely toaster, as toasters go. <laughs> and she said to me, could I have your name and address? No. <laughs> you can have $49. <laughs> and I will take this toaster. And that's really all I planned on today. What do you say? She goes, we really do want you in our system. I... But I'm not adopting the toaster. Is this like a foster toaster program? I didn't see any signs. Once I walk out the door with this toaster, you're never gonna see it again. <laughs> they want your email, they want your address. You, remember when you could buy and walk out the door? I remember that. I, I tell my nieces and nephews that they don't believe me. You know, you used to buy stuff and walk out the door and they didn't ask any questions. Oh, Uncle John, you tell funny stories to make people laugh. No! They used to buy stuff and leave. And that's all that happened. I tell my brothers and sisters, back me up. Tell them you used to buy stuff and leave. They go, oh, don't fill their heads with nonsense. So I go to buy my $49 toaster, and it's easy for me to say that I have lost my cherub-like demeanor. <laughs> she said to me, would you like to buy the warranty for the toaster? No. It's $49. I think I'm going to absorb the risk on this one. If this toaster should break, and God forbid that day should come, I'm going to take another $49 out of my pocket and buy another toaster, because that's how I live. On the edge, baby. I went to Bed Bath & Beyond. Very nice store. But I go without a coupon just to freak them out. They don't understand. Because everybody has coupons. A lot of you have them on you. They're this big. You look like Willy Wonka's golden ticket. My sisters have stacks of them. They have a holster for Bed Bath & Beyond coupon. <laughs> One time I was with my sisters, and they were at the other end of the store, and they saw me at the cash register. They knew I didn't have a coupon. They jumped over people. They trampled them. You have one, get me! If, 
this lady thinks it's let's make a deal. I'll give $50 for a Bed Bath & Beyond coupon. I've got one, Monty! <laughs> one time I went to Bed Bath & Beyond and I didn't have a coupon. People talked about me in line. He doesn't have a coupon. Is he all right? You don't think he's dangerous, do you? One lady felt sorry for me. You don't have a coupon? Do you know how to get home? Is your name in your jacket? They have money. Money is the original coupon. It says in God we trust. Don't you trust God? I must say one thing about Bed Bath & Beyond. And I do shop there. They are not fussy about the coupon. They're not looking for expiration dates. It could be from linens and things. And they closed. You could write coupon on the back of a Snickers wrapper. And they will swipe it. I could write coupon on I go to Bed Bath & Beyond without a coupon and the cashier gives me a coupon. And this is how it went. Now life is precious and we've got to make the most of it. And I don't have time for useless, ridiculous things. And she said, you don't have a coupon? I said, no. She said, well, here's one. Thank you. Here. Doesn't make any sense. It's silly, isn't it? Last summer, I went to a health and fitness place. Yes, and I had a stress test and blood work. And I go to this doctor there, wonderful lady. But my stress test and my blood work are good and she's shocked. I mean, at least be a little happy. Don't look like horrified that I, I don't have anything bad. This is how she told me. She... I guess she bet the over, I don't know. Is this you? These are good. Your blood pressure is 112 over 70. We'll have that checked. It must be Celsius. Is there Celsius on there? No, there is not. Can we have a little joy and gratitude? I, being healthy. The doctor at this health and fit, fitness place told me one thing. She looked at me very seriously and you know, I, I'm, I'm not getting any younger and, I, and I, I was nervous for a minute and she said, did you know that you're allergic to wheat? <laughs> and I looked at her and said, but I'm a wheat farmer! <laughs> I'm allergic to wheat and I thought, oh well, I can't harvest wheat anymore. I'm hanging up my sickle. Because don't friends call you in the fall and go, we're harvesting this weekend, you never miss. I can't. I'm allergic. Then I thought, wait a second, you make flour out of wheat. Perhaps I should inquire further. I said, what does this whole wheat thing mean to me, pray tell? She said, well, do you eat a lot of gluten? Oh. 
I don't know what gluten is, but I would say yes. I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm mostly gluten. And she said, well, you should avoid anything with gluten in it. I said, okay, thank you, and started to leave the room, and I said, what has gluten in it? You know what has gluten in it? Everything! Every reason to wake up in the morning. I'm looking at this thing of things to avoid, and I said, check again, maybe it's just cancer. How am I gonna live? She, she told me to go try gluten-free products. Now, if you, I, I, I went to a health food store which was a new experience for me. And now I like shopping at health food stores. And if you want to know where the gluten-free stuff is, look for a gentleman with a gun in his mouth. Because bullets are gluten-free. Have, have you tried gluten-free food? It needs gluten. I don't know what gluten is, but apparently it's delicious. And you need to put that back in there. I, I tried the gluten-free pasta. And at this point I'm thinking, I hope they make a gluten substitute, like a sweetened gluten, or I can't believe it's not gluten. Now, I think, we have people here that know pasta. Pasta, you boil. You are my people. Pasta, you boil, boiling water, 10 minutes or less, little olive oil, little salt. Gluten-free pasta, 90 minutes. <laughs> So last year I flew all over, over Canada. And well, actually we drove a lot of it too, which I enjoyed. We drove to Prince Edward Island. If you wanna know where Prince Edward Island is, it's at the end. <laughs> Drive until you're done and you'll see a bridge. Go over the bridge and they're right there. And we had a thousand people on Sunday and Monday. And it was so touching. I'm thinking, this is like everybody. <laughs> and they couldn't, couldn't have been nicer people. There's, it's not a big town. There's like 12 stores on the main drag. It's a beautiful place to go. If you want to get away and quiet, it's a beach community. And there were 10 Anne of Green Gables gift shops. <laughs> of Green Gables is the early 1900s. It's a book young ladies would read. I guess it's a nice thing. Uh, you read it growing up. But 10 Anne of Green Gables gift shops. And half of them are Anne of Green Gables gift shops. And half of them are candy stores. You know, because you can't make money just off of Anne of Green Gables. The franchise isn't as big as it used to be. So they have these older ladies dressed from the early 1900s in jumpers like 12 year old girls and they're all walking towards you with candy samples and it gets creepy. It's like, kind of like the thriller video, you know? I 
highly recommend it as a place to go and meet nice people. I was in Ottawa and they asked me if I ice skated. I said, oh yes, I am a skater. I competed in my younger days. I was short and sassy before Dorothy Hammer. People skate there, they skate all day. They skate so long they have snack stands on the ice. And on these snack stands, they sell these things called beaver tails. And they're giant fried dough. And they cover it in hot fudge and M&Ms. And I wanted one. <laughs> and they make you skate to it. And I'm standing at the edge of the ice like the kid from Up. <laughs> I waited three days. They said, no, you have to skate. It's tradition. <laughs> I waited three days. Three days, and I couldn't take it anymore. So I put skates on and they pushed me and I skated it was and I didn't do one one block around or once around I went right to the fried dough stand I didn't want to mess around and I was gonna make it to the fried dough there was a family in the way a mom and dad and two little kids He shouldn't have been in the way of the fried dough. They turned around and they saw me. You know what I saw in their eyes? I saw hope. You know, like, oh, he'll stop. I couldn't and I didn't. And they went down like a set of bowling pins. But I bought them all fried dough while the paramedics looked them over. So it worked out pretty good. Ice skating is now on my list of things in life I never care if I do again. It's like an anti-bucket list. It rhymes with bucket, I can tell you that much. Hiking. If I'm not ice skating, I'm hiking. What do I think of hiking? I hate it, I hate it. You hike down a mountain, you hike down a ravine. Horrible stories start with, well, we were hiking. <laughs> and you ended up in North Korea, didn't you? <laughs> Why were you hiking? Because people do this in LA all the time. Oh, we're sick of the city. We're hiking. Do you know how to hike? Well, no, but we have new boots. <laughs> I'm tired of anybody that gets new boots and a compass thinking they're a hiker. <laughs> Happens every year, doesn't it? Two people go out, new boots, compass, <laughs> and they get lost. Then they have to ha send a hundred people out to find them. <laughs> then, then ten of those poor bastards get lost. <laughs> they got to send a thousand poor bastards out to get them. <laughs> Pretty soon, ten thousand people looking for two with new boots and a compass. Two summers ago, I had the pleasure of performing at the Edinburgh Festival in Scotland. And I thought, what a huge blessing this is to work in Scotland. I started stand-up 25 years ago in Boston, Massachusetts. And... It, 
it, it has been a wonderful journey. It really has. And I thought Scotland, just, just another blessing that uh, this occupation has given me. But everything great in my life has a catch to it. My manager has been my manager for 20 years. He's my best friend. He's one of the smartest people I know, but not this time. <laughs> he forgot to read the contract. I'm going to work 26 out of 27 nights in Scotland. That's too many for me. Remember, I'm used to being in places between two and six days. After the third week in Scotland, my brain is screaming at me. Why did you move to Scotland? <laughs> 26 out of 27 nights, and it rained every day. It was the worst rain since the time of William Wallace known as Braveheart. Every man dies, but not every man has an umbrella. The Scottish dialect, I think I have a pretty good ear for dialects. It's very thick when, when they're, they've been drinking, which is quite a bit. Um, where do you want to go now, Ed? It's a problem. You got it, pal. But every day, think about it, every day for a month, I would wake up, it would be raining, and I would be in Scotland. It's like the movie Groundhog's Day. I'm calling up old girlfriends, apologizing, take the curse off of me! Now, that being said, if you're going just for the Edinburgh Festival, go. Just don't go 26 out of 27 nights. They, they rented me an apartment and the apartment had a futon bed. <laughs> you know what a futon bed is? It's a little more comfortable than a yoga mat. <laughs> That's all it is. There ain't much to it. Some of you have futon beds, and, and I actually like futon beds because they're honest. They have F-U right in the name. And, So, if somebody call, don't people call you and go, we're coming to visit, it's going to be Taste of Chicago, we're going to come to visit. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can sleep on the futon. <laughs> you know if you have a futon for your guest, they won't be staying long. <laughs> After the third day, I had sciatica. I was crippled. And they made you walk. They, they didn't pick you up. It wasn't in the contract. <laughs> and I said, well, where is the venue? They said, well, you can now see it from here. <laughs> then you can now walk it from here. It wasn't a walk. It was more of a hike. And you know how much I love those. I oh, don't look at me. I used to be a comedian. <laughs> Master says I must tell the jokes. I walked in to a sandwich shop, and it's not like our sandwich shops here. They're cheap with the toppings. You know, you know how like they load stuff up at a sub shop here? Now, can I have tomato? I'll pay extra. <laughs> they think, oh, he's a big guy. He can't jump over the counter. <laughs> well, they're wrong. I'll be over that counter before they can look up. 
Black olives on a sandwich. How much of black olives? You have to pretend to sprinkle them like fairy dust. <laughs> Open your hand, Harry Potter. <laughs> they gave me a fried Snickers bar. Oh, how was that? Oh, it was peaceful and I walked towards a bright light. After the third day of eating in pubs, I was going, can I just get an arugula salad? <laughs> there was a Chinese buffet in Scotland. Now, listen. I, I don't go to buffets much anymore for health reasons and restraining orders. But... I feel I was singled out a number of times, but I'm not gonna fight it. I know when I'm wrong. And I started comedy in Massachusetts, and I put a few guys out of business, well, me and a few friends. What if, what if one Chinese buffet owner from where I started comedy moved to Edinburgh? And with a lot of bad memories, and he rebuilt his life and his business. And then I walk into his buffet 20 years later. <laughs> Father! The forbidden one has returned! <laughs> you think we forget about you, son of a bitch? We still have your picture. <laughs> you go now again. <laughs> and squeeze that in. <laughs> See, I grew up in a predominantly Irish and Italian community. And my father was a bartender at the Irish American. And I, that's why I first liked, learned to like dialects. Because he had friends from Ireland. And I get to listen to them and they tell me all wonderful stories about growing up in Ireland. It was quite fascinating. And, but you know what? It, it, honesty is part of their culture. And they said, you're a good boy, but you're a fat little kid. <laughs> I don't want to frighten you. But if you're too fat, the angels won't be able to carry it to heaven. <laughs> and, actually, my dad's friends from Ireland gave me the best diet advice they ever had. I'm going to give you a diet. It's going to work for you your whole life. And it is, you know, because I've been up and I've been down and I feel pretty good now. And he said, this is the only thing that's ever worked. Gonna write it down. It's a good diet. Stop your eating. If you see it and it looks all sweet and tasty, well then keep walking. Cause you're a fashion boy. That would make a good Nutrisystem commercial. I'm Tommy Sullivan for Nutrisystem. Send in $49.95, we'll send you a big box of nothing. <laughs> now go out and take a walk. The national dish of Scotland is called haggis. I don't like to eat anything that rhymes with gagus. Haggis is sheep intestines with oats and spices. Mmm. They ask you every day. One of the many things I loved about Scottish people are that they're fiercely proud and patriotic. And they ask you, 
every day. Have you had haggis yet? Oh, haggis is beautiful. Go get yourself a proper haggis. I waited. I waited for three weeks. I waited till my manager came. The gentleman that booked me 26 out of 27 nights. I said, where should we eat? I said, we're having haggis. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> now, haggis comes with a whiskey gravy. That helped. It didn't have whiskey in it like... Is there whiskey in here? It had whiskey in it like... Did I call you last night? <laughs> Thank you very much.